Welcome, Jesus, and thank you for doing this interview. Um, as you know, I'm Anto Pollock, and I'm quite fascinated about the universe in general. Yep. And um, I'd like to ask some questions about your experiences from your perspective yep. about the universe in general. Um, I have Mary Magdalene with me, <laughs> well, who won't be conduct, who won't be answering questions, but will be assisting. Me. I'll be asking. Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, no worries. So the way I thought I'd start it is, uh, I actually had thought, how would you compare man's definition versus you know, your definition and, and from God's perspective about what the universe really is? So I went to the concise Collins Dictionary yeah. and they defined the universe as, well, they didn't give a complete, they didn't give a complete uh, definition. They provided three alternatives. So I thought I'd just read it to you. The universe is defined as A, astronomy, the aggregate of all existing matter, energy and space, from the Latin universum, meaning the whole world. Yeah. Or B, uh, human beings collectively. Or C, province or sphere of thought or activity. Yeah. Now, how do these man's definitions accurately define the universe? Well, Anton, I sort of feel like the way man defines the universe is very um, is quite rigid and quite and quite limited as well. Because the way God created the universe and the man and the way man sees the universe is very, very different. So when man examines the universe, he sees the universe from his own perspective outwards. Whereas um, when you get to see have other per perspectives, and in particular when you connect with God more fully, you start to have God's perspective of the universe. And God's perspective of the universe is very, very different to man's perspective of the universe. A lot of times what happens with man's perspective is they firstly see the universe, particularly men on Earth, see the universe as a physical universe. In other words, there are things that they see and uh, or can measure that they cannot see um, with instruments, you know, measure with instruments, even though they cannot see, and they then define that as matter. But recently, of course, there's been a lot of developments where man started to realise that for many of their theories to be correct, they have to come up with concepts such as antimatter and or, or and dark matter um, and dark energy and dark flow. These are all concepts that men are using now to define certain aspects of the universe. But they're all still very much uh, analysing the physical aspect of the universe, and they realise that there's things they cannot see. Um, but there's still this very strong focus on what can be seen and what can be measured. And and God's perception of the universe and God's creation of the universe is very different to that, of course. Also, as you progress uh, spiritually, you as you come to know God's ideas about the universe, you start seeing a very, very different universe than what mankind believes actually exists. Mm. And, uh, and this incorporates even their beliefs about how the universe came into existence and how the universe is maintained. All of these things are all very different um, than what mankind currently conceives them to be. So how would you define, what would you define as being the universe? Do you have the same perspective as what God would have? Well, um, perhaps we can, we need to define two areas of the universe. One is the universe that is currently in existence. Um, which is a, what I would call a, a combination of universes uh, rather than just the, as man sees our the galaxy and therefore the universe that we exist in as one universe. There are actually a combination of these physical universes, many of them, and, but there are also a combination of spiritual universes. So there's, there's the universe that man sees, then there all the universes that man sees, then there's the universes that man does not see, but does come to see when they pass, when they die. And then there is also the physical structure that God has placed so that the universe has the capacity to create more universes. So if you look at what God sees, God has created a, a system of laws that allow for future universes to come into existence, beyond which are currently in existence. So, so there are, if you like, a framework that God has created, and then there is the physical universes 
some of which are material in nature, some of which are spiritual in nature, and some of which I would classify as soul in nature. And, and then there's all of those ones in soul in nature yet to be created, but God has placed in place the structure for their creation. So does God create, you mentioned that the universe can create more universes. How does the create like does God create the other universes or has inbuilt the potential within our universe for more creation? Well, firstly, when it comes to the physical universe, yes, God created the physical universe. That came into existence purely from God's desire and passion and energy. So that's the matter that we That's know the matter of. that we yep. that we have. Yep. And then God's love and, and laws create the structure of other potentials occurring based on this mankind getting in the condition of the creation of those other potentials. So if, if we can illustrate that properly, um, it's like the physical universe was created and by the way uh, part of the physical universe was spiritual in nature so there was a spiritual po portion of the universe that was created at the same time and we, we call that, or what we've been calling that or terming that, is, is up to the sixth dimension of the spiritual world. All of that came into existence at the original inception, if you like, of creation. God created that. So, sorry, just to clarify, that spiritual realm, mm -hmm. God created this physical realm, which is what, as people on earth, without any kind of religious or spiritual background, we accept as the universe, scientifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying that there's a spiritual realm, yes. uh, which is a place where spirits exist? Yes, or, with, with yeah. matter. It has matter right. of a subliminated form, but it has matter. It has uh, very, very similar physical matter that you can touch and feel and so forth. Um, and you can, and it was... Pro it progresses in love up to the, what's called the sixth dimension of the spirit of the spirit world, or the sixth year, yeah. and all of that came into existence as far as it is known, because nobody was present at the time. As far as it is known, it came into existence through God's creation, through God's creation of this process, if you like. Yeah. And um, but every other dimension above that, or every other universe above that, has come into into creation, not from God's effort, but rather from God's laws interacting with man's effort. Mm. So in other words, um, once a person who is human progresses to a certain uh, condition of love, spontaneously once they reach that condition of love, this next universe or dimension is created like that. So a new part of the universe. So a new part of the universe is born and comes into existence. Yes. So the universe is in existence in a current structure, in a, in a defined field. Um, what, what do you mean by that, Anto? Like, if there is a physical, if you say that there's a physical realm, yep. and there's a spiritual realm and there's a potential for another realm, how does that exist within the universe? Um, well, not the potential, there is another realm. So there's the physical, the spiritual and the soul-based realms are all in existence. But uh, the, the soul-based rooms have been created through the effort of man interacting with the laws that God created. So, so it's a bit like um, when we first came here on Earth, the very first time when mankind was placed on Earth, there was no physical house for a person to live in. But there was the matter around or surrounding the person where they could create the house if they so desired, if they used their will um, and their knowledge of, of technology, they could then create something or cause something to come into existence. Does that make sense? So, so, so if you think about that from, the, from a larger perspective, instead of, instead of it just being this small perspective of like we can create a house and we create a house from the different elements of the earth, if you can think of the larger perspective being we can create a universe, you personally can create a universe if, and the very first person who gets into the condition of love to create that, the universe spontaneously comes into existence because of the passion and desire of the individual and now, but, but the skeleton of that universe or the laws that control that universe have already been created, have already been created by God. 